On this episode of China Uncensored, Vice President Pence has a few words for China. Okay, 4,000 words. Have you heard about Google's China scandal? Then maybe you should Google it. And finally, you can't spell patriotism without approval from the party. This is China Uncensored. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Last week, Vice President Mike Pence gave China a real pounding. In a 40-minute speech at the Hudson Institute, a prominent conservative think tank in Washington, D.C., Vice President Pence laid out the case against the Chinese Communist Party. America had hoped that economic liberalization would bring China into a greater partnership with us and with the world. Instead, China has chosen economic aggression, which has in turn emboldened its growing military. I would play the entire 40-minute speech, but instead, let me summarize it in 30 seconds. Pence talked about some issues that might sound familiar, like intellectual property theft, trade violations, military aggression. Basically, it came off like a 40-minute episode of China Uncensored, but with less jokes. What's that, Shelley? Okay, fine. With fewer jokes. See, we're hilarious. Pence also said the Chinese regime is trying to undermine democracy in the United States. And worst of all, China has initiated an unprecedented effort to influence American public opinion, the 2018 elections, and the environment leading into the 2020 presidential elections. Now that's something President Trump also said at the UN Security Council. If you haven't been paying attention, some of Pence's speech might seem a little exaggerated. The Chinese Communist Party is rewarding or coercing American businesses, movie studios, universities, think tanks, scholars, journalists, and local, state, and federal officials. I mean, that is a lot of people to reward or coerce. But as the Wall Street Journal puts it, this isn't a casual accusation. For months, a team of national security officials has been compiling a study on the many ways China uses money, power, and rewards to affect the way it is viewed in the U.S. As I'm sure you can imagine, the Chinese Communist Party was not happy about Pence spreading all these malicious rumors to undermine China's harmonious society. Which is why state-run Xinhua ran this article called not so bright rumor spreading, a critique of U.S. leader using absurd arguments to defame China. And Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said, this is nothing but hearsay evidence, confusing right and wrong, and creating something out of thin air. Thin air? Then I must be a magician because I've made six years worth of YouTube videos out of this stuff. Of course, who knows what the future of China Uncensored is on YouTube because there's more unsettling news out about YouTube's owner, Google, and its relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. At the beginning of August, a Google insider leaked a secret project Google was working on called Dragonfly. It's a search engine that would censor all the things the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want people to know about. Pence even mentioned it in his speech. For example, Google should immediately end development of the Dragonfly app that will strengthen the Communist Party's censorship and compromise the privacy of Chinese customers. Google has not publicly responded to questions about Dragonfly. The closest thing we got to a response was head of Google search, Ben Gomez, telling the BBC, right now all we've done is some exploration, but since we don't have any plans to launch something, there's nothing much I can say about it. I mean, they don't have any plans to launch something, so wait, what's this? Gomez wants to launch Dragonfly as soon as possible and get it brought off the shelf and quickly deployed? That's from a leaked transcript where Gomez told Google employees the exact opposite of what he later told the BBC. Now, I'm not saying that Google would do anything it takes to get into the China market. Would they censor their search engine? Who knows? Even a top Google executive can't seem to figure out whether the Chinese Communist Party censors its citizens. This Wednesday was National Day in Taiwan. It celebrates the founding of the Republic of China, aka the government of China, that now occupies Taiwan. And what better way to celebrate than with a military drill? They called it a, quote, simulated invasion by opposing force. No particular opposing force, though. I mean, it could be the People's Liberation Army, which has vowed to conquer Taiwan, or it could be aliens. 
I mean, really, either is possible. By the way, Pence also talked about Taiwan. America will always believe that Taiwan's embrace of democracy shows a better path for all the Chinese people. Come on, Mr. Vice President. Is there even anything left for me to talk about? Uh, let's see here. Ah, Hong Kong. You didn't talk about Hong Kong. And the good news is, there's bad news from Hong Kong. It looks like Victor Mallet, the Asian news editor for the Financial Times, as well as the vice president of Hong Kong's Foreign Correspondence Club, had his media visa for Hong Kong canceled. Why? Well, no official reason. The Chinese Communist Party has promised to honor the one country, two systems policy, where Hong Kong gets to keep freedoms the rest of China never had. And the Communist Party would never not honor its promises. But the mysterious decision to reject Victor Mallet's visa did happen just weeks after the Foreign Correspondence Club hosted a talk by a Hong Kong activist Beijing really doesn't like. The Chinese regime has denied visas to several journalists in mainland China over the last few years, but this is the first time it's happened in Hong Kong. Could this be yet another sign of the Chinese Communist Party's increasing erosion of Hong Kong's freedoms? I'm sure everything is fine. And in this lovely article from the Financial Times, I learned the Trump administration won't talk trade with China at the G20, unless Beijing makes a list of concessions first. And since the IMF says the trade war is going to hit China harder than the U.S., the Chinese regime might not have much of a choice but to make some concessions. Not that they won't drag this out as long as possible. And finally, Chin An, the director of the China Institute of Cyberspace Strategy, has finally released a hip new single about China's cyberspace strategy. I know, you've all been dying to hear it. It's creatively called Cyberspace Strategy Song. Let's have a listen. A new territory for national governance? Cyberspace, it's been Chinese territory since ancient times. The song was written for the 2018 China Cybersecurity Week, where China will send a panda into orbit. Okay, sometimes I don't check facts. I just believe what's in my heart. And this is not even the first Chinese propaganda song about cyberspace. In 2015, the Central Cyberspace Affairs Commission had this song, The Mind and Spirit of Cyberspace Security. The director of the Central Cyberspace Affairs Commission is Xi Jinping who is also the chair of the Central Military Commission. So hopefully, the military and the Cyberspace Commission can work together more, because cyberspace is a dangerous place. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And before you go, now is the time when I answer questions from you, the loyal members of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, who support the show on the crowdfunding website, Patreon. Damien Shale asks, Chris, how did Matt, Shelley, and you meet? Also. When did you guys get the idea for making the show? Well, I met Shelley when I was working in Langley, Virginia on a farm. She had been sent to help me buy the farm, but I charmed her out of it. Eventually, we teamed up and went rogue. Kind of an A-team situation, helping people in need. There was this one family in Guatemala we rescued from being killed by narco-traffickers. The family couldn't afford to pay us, though, so they gave us Matt. But Matt made the team a little too... Um, unwieldy to be an elite rescue squad, so we naturally fell back on the next best thing, a China-themed YouTube channel. And the rest is history. We're thinking of optioning the movie rights to Hollywood. Thanks for your question. And do you have a question you want to ask me? Then join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. You'll get some cool rewards for your contribution, including having the chance to have me answer your questions on the show. So sign up at patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. As I mentioned, China Uncensored is supported mainly through direct viewer contribution. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored or click this orange button. Check out all the cool rewards you get for being a Patreon supporter, including, of course, having me answer your questions on the show.